are committed in bringing fast and smooth experience to our users. And a big part of that is related to cooling technology because the more powerful the chipset gets, the more heat it uh, kind of generates. So then we need to be able to cool it down so that we can keep the amazing experience for the user. In the moments where the phone is heating up, so obviously when the processor is really working hard on the, on the content that you're uh, enjoying on the display, uh, charging is another one. I think those are the main two ones where we really need to cool the phone down and I think the active cooling now on this concept phone is the way to go in the future. But obviously we wanted to showcase, make it visible to the user. So we created a transparent back class on the device. And, and obviously on this device as well, we wanted to create more visual of the, of the experience. So that's why we have a liquid that actually shines and, and similar to the halo light on the camera. To really make it easy to understand what's happening inside the phone. So the liquid, the micro pumps pumping it inside the phone uh, is taking the heat from the chipset area, delivering elsewhere in the phone and cooling it down. Right. So it's really, I think it's the way to go in the future when we need even more power uh, and then we need to cool the phone down. Fantastic. Now let me ask you a question which I know no one has asked you at all. My guarantee. Mm. So when will this concept <laughs> become a reality? <laughs> I'd love to tell you, but I can't. No, but, but, but the point, the more important it's point is I that, can say that will, it's will it come? Because it's there are sometimes concepts that to, never yeah. ever... So is this something that we can think that will be there in the future? Yeah. It will be. Oh, Absolutely. That's all I wanted to know. This is the Honor Magic VS. So you're like, okay, what's the magic? The magic is, it's a folding phone. You'll be like, okay, have you seen folding phones before? Well, mm. this one is very remarkable for three reasons. It's super thin. What's the biggest problem with folding phones? When you fold them, they're thick. So Samsung Galaxy uh, Fold 4, about 16 mm. This is about 12 mm. Opens out to a nice big screen. Much bigger battery in this 5000 mAh battery. Pretty good cameras, looks really, really nice. Outer screen, nice and big. So interesting, but I'll tell you the third big thing, Honor is now different, separated from Huawei, which means this has -da, the Play Store on it. Might be coming to India, might be very, very inexpensive. I'll tell you when it comes in there. Realme GT3, the global launch just happened out here in the Mobile World Congress. World's fastest charging commercial phone that has been released. What is the kind of speed? 0 to 20% in about 120 seconds and a 0 to 100% in about 9 minutes. Now those are really fantastic speeds. 240 watt fast charger, so really is quite epic. But you know, besides this whole charging thing and all the technology, there's a lot more to this phone. Rajan, great to meet you again. Uh, the Qualcomm booth out here at MWC looks fantastic. But I'm going to jump right in because we were having an off-camera conversation that I now want should be on camera. Okay. First of all, without any further ado, what is this? Oh, this is interesting and we briefly talked about it. This is called a compact macro. Okay. A very odd term, uh, compact and macro, typically they don't wear. You get a sense that a macro is supposed to be big. Right. But this is actually a macro which is compact, meaning this is a type of a new form factor we have invented. And this is primarily a millimeter wave compact macro. This is almost similar to if you have to compare to something you would have typically seen on a huge mast on the top of a building. This is something and this goes as small as this. As technology progresses... So, so what does this do? If I'm a consumer at home, I want fixed wireless access, which has become the buzzword at MWC, yeah. which yeah. basically means the 5G I have on my phone mm -hmm. replicated in a much, much better, faster way for me to use in my house with my Wi-Fi router. Mm -hmm. How does this make it happen? So this is a part of the infrastructure. Okay. This is called infrastructure. So let's say you look at it and you think about a tower or something at the top of your building or a mass. But those towers have massive things. Massive. So just this, 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 this. this. So okay. that is part of the infrastructure. Okay. And then you go in and you come closer to your home, there'll be a small box. 
which you can see there. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. These are so outdoor so units. So, so this, this is going to be something which I just put outside my exactly. house. Exactly. This will talk to that. Uh, this will talk to that. It will beam one millimeter wave or whatever that beam it will come directly direct to, you. to you it's like almost like the base station is almost dedicated to you okay the beam will come straight to you which is not the conventional way it's called massive mimo okay. so that mimo beam comes to you okay. and it points at your home so you get a dedicated beam to your home C comes and captures here and from that you can connect to any wi-fi of course this is a this is a high-end Wi-Fi, right. it's more complicated, but you have the normal routers, which are there. Those sort of routers you can install in the home and you are good to go. This is a wireless 5G broadband in the home. It's also called as wireless fiber. Right, and this then, with a Wi-Fi router that will talk to this inside the house, I can then have a spread of it all and get some incredible speed. Theoretically, what could this give to me in my house if they did not sub-distribute it? You could go, like, depending on what type of solutions you want to implement here but you could go anywhere on an average to a 1 gbps to a 2 gbps if you so want wow. most of us conventionally would be what use case we have in the home for a OTT. we are good with 50 mbps to around 100 mbps right. but this could go as high as one so theoretically i could get two to four gbps yeah, with this okay. yeah but we as qualcomm are also inventing technology which also make this a little bit easier and we talked briefly about open ram yes. i know it's a complicated term but those no, but I, i'd love for you to explain it to me maybe in three sentences that everybody out there would actually understand yeah so Open RAN is... Can you, can you first break down that acronym? Because okay, so the very fact that it's called Open RAN, yeah. it closes everybody's mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we engineers sometimes prevail over the consumer right. mindset. But I think, yeah, it's, a, it's partially an injustice. So Open RAN, Open RAN is Open Radio Access Network. Now, it's very simple. Yeah. Radio means the tower. Right. For, for a consumer, radio means nothing. But what you see at top of a building, it's called a radio. Right. It's not the radio we play, but that's a radio. That's radiating something, it's called a radio. Right. Now, Open RAN is one in architectural change that is coming to the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wherein the option the, inf the operator has is to go and mix and match and create a solution on its own using standard equipment. So Rajan, thank you so much as always. Talking to you opens up my mind to five different areas. So this could carry on for, you know, 24 seven as we are on right now. But uh, thank you so thank much you, for Rajiv. speaking with us. And uh, thank you, uh, we look Lovely forward to everything that we're going to see from Qualcomm this year. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you.